Hi guys, and thanks for joining me for this quick tutorial. In this video, I wanted to show you how to deal with legacy systems. So for example, if you still want to test with Postman, a system that still has a form-based authentication method where you have to input in a form your username and password, and then you usually get a session or something like that as a cookie. And after that, you want to call additional endpoints. Well, this usually tends to be problematic and exactly this is what I wanted to show you in this video, how you can work with this, how you can create your own request and deal with this kind of legacy authentication methods. So without further ado, let's just dig into it and I will show you how it works. What you can see on the screen now is a simple WordPress site that I just created with a Docker container. So there's nothing special about it and what I'm interested in in actually is the backend. Now in the backend part you'll see that I have the possibility of entering a username or an address and in this case my username and password are both admin. So, and I'm taking WordPress because it's just a very simple example on any legacy system or any system where you basically still log in using a logging format. Now let's imagine that we are trying to access one protected resource. For example a list of all the users. I'll see here the address for all the users. So when I'm going to insert it in Postman and execute the request, I really need to look into the body to see what actually happened because all the requests get a status. Now, as you can see, I cannot access that resource. So WordPress detected this guy is not logged in and he's not administrator, so he cannot access this. And this is exactly what we were trying to do with Postman is to simulate a login even if you don't have any interaction with it. So we'll get Postman to do that for us and then call this protected resource, the users, and see how it goes. In order to get that to run, we need to better understand what exactly is happening when we do the login. Close this window and I'm gonna log myself out. And then from the menu, I will activate the developer tools. Chrome developer tools are a very nice way on inspecting what exactly is happening. And for that reason, I will go to the network tab. I'll make sure I preserve the log. Initially, I will allow and list. Let's see again what's happening I call this page. I'm giving the logging form. I will simply clear a bit what everything that has been logged so far. And I'll type in my username and password. So let's hit the login button. Now we're logged in. In order to figure out what exactly happened and what was sent to the backend, look at one of these. Now, most likely the request that has been sent either listed documents, but in our case it's actually under others. So we'll see here a request that we have been sent. A bit bigger. We'll be able to see that this is the response header, this is not interesting. What's important, actually this form data that we sent. So you'll see that I've sent an admin, a password. I've clicked the submit button basically. And all this information is relevant for me and for this login. And I can do this manually in Postman to take the URL that has been added to recreate this form data. But it not only takes a lot of time, but additionally, it can lead to some errors and time wasted. So for that reason, I will right click here on VP minus login. Over copy. And I'm gonna copy this as curve. Once I've done that, I'll return to Postman. A nice feature of Postman is the possibility of importing from different formats. And one of the formats supported by Postman is Curve. And for that reason, I'm gonna simply go to Import. It's 
switch to paste raw text and paste the curl string that I have just copied. I'm gonna click import. And Postman is able to figure out exactly what's going on, what, ne what it needs to do in order to build this request. So Postman generated the body for us. And now, with cookies, you want generally to be careful. Um, for example, generally you don't want to send any cookies that contain a session or something like that, because that is already probably expired. This is a session that I previously had, um, but this WordPress test cookie is actually that Postman needs. So for example, it doesn't make any sense that I send this, it's from another application. But this WordPress test cookie is a way for WordPress to know that the browser is supporting cookies. So we'll keep that. Additionally, we'll have to look at cookies to see under listed under the domain name if there are any cookies that we would like to remove. For example, these two ones we haven't done anything yet, so we'll just remove them and I'm gonna keep the WordPress test cookie. Now everything looks good and the next step would be to just submit a request. Now even if I'm getting this weird error here, I'm having the impression that I'm already logged in. So what I can do now is to go to the other tab and now, well, it's working. So the reason why it's working is that the other request we submitted with an authentication request and in exchange we got a session cookie. So if I go back and inspect the cookies, I will see here that I got new cookies. So I have this addition cookies from WordPress. Basically they make sure that I have a session. So this is basically how it's done in a system like WordPress. Next I wanted to show you a more advanced scenario by using Joomla. And Joomla has a small particularity, uh, which is quite interesting and a lot of applications have it. It's basically a security feature called cross-site request forgery protection. And this is enabled on this logging form. And we need to sort of a bypass that. And the logging form has something very interesting. And as I previously said, it's a security mechanism basically called um, cross-site request forgery token. So every time this page is loaded, the value that you see here will be randomly generated and stored in a session. And the Joomla backend checks this value every time frontend submits the request. So basically it wants to make sure that the user that actually seen this logging form is the same user submitting the request. This is something that WordPress didn't have, but Joomla implements this. Unfortunately for us, this makes the authentication a bit harder, but not impossible as you will see. But don't be surprised um, if you find such a token inside your logging form or inside any other forms for that matter, uh, which you submit with Postman. Um, usually they are called uh, CSERF or something like that. In this case, it's quite unusual because the name is actually random, but the value is fixed one. It doesn't matter, it will go over it. So again, I have the developer tools opened. Login. And again, let's figure out which is the request that actually sent the data to the backend. Switching back to others. See here that we have a post request. See the data that was in form. This is the request that we're looking for. Copy, copy as curl. And again, click the import. Paste this raw text here. And Postman will know what to do. As you can basically see, I have a username, I have a password, other information that Joomla needs for the authentication, and I have this token again. Additionally, we'll go over the headers. 
and you'll see here that I still have some headers that I really do not want or need. And for that reason, I will simply delete the whole headers because Joomla is generating a session right when I call the first logging page. So let me quickly demonstrate you that this is actually not working. And I'll get this error here. The most recent request was denied because it contained an invalid security token. So, well, it doesn't work. For that reason, I will simply open this page again, where it shows the logging form. Actually, what we need to do is to make this request, so to render the logging form, then see exactly that's the value. This value, we need to send it to the next request actually doing the login. In order to do that, we're going to use a third party library called Serio. And I already have a small example uh, inside the Postman Quick Reference Guide. So, by the way, if you haven't downloaded the Postman Quick Reference Guide, I will paste the link in this video description. And in case you don't know it, this is a collection of information and a cheat sheet and basically shortcuts on how to achieve different cool things in Postman. So make sure you download it. It's totally free. Now going back to Postman, what we'll do is the following. I'm going to simply paste this text here. This does a couple of interesting things. So first, first of all, it initializes Serio and uh, it gives as an input the whole response. And we'll have this response HTML object. The next step would be to look at something that example already shows. So for that matter, let's use the, let's imagine that we have a CSERF token here and that we don't know the value. So option, for example, search for option. And I get the value of that. When I will submit this request, you will see here that com login has been used. This is not exactly what we are trying to do. We are trying basically to do the opposite. So we don't know the name, but we know the value. So basically, what we'll do here is we put value of option will type one and now we're not actually interested in the value because we know the value. So we're interested in an attribute called name. And the way we do that is actually calling this method, and giving name as a parameter. Let's submit this again. Now we have the token. So this is the exact token that we need to pass to the next request. And in Postman, in order to do that, we'll have to define a variable. And the simplest way to do this is to set a global variable. And I'm going to use the snippet for doing that. If you have the snippets hidden, just open them from here. So let's call this CSERF token name. The value we'll actually get from here. Either save the whole thing. Then we are both able to lock the output. Great, so far so good. Now next way on to do is go back to this request and instead of this string, we'll put our global variable. Now it's totally fine that it's red because we haven't submitted the request yet. Start from here. Again, I'm gonna go to cookie and to delete any cookies that I might have. For example, this one. I want to start with the clean cookies. Um, like I'm first visiting this website, I haven't seen anything yet. And 
first things first this request will be sent and this is basically just rendering the login form with the next request I already have everything prepared and now the CSF token name has been properly filled and when I'm submitting this request now, I'm having the cookie from the previous request in the previous session and this is basically the backend is not pretty is not very pretty but this is the actual backend so I now have been logged in and the proof of that is that I have gotten here a session cookie Additionally, in the third request, this is actually the endpoint that I wanted to call where previously I have not been authenticated and now see a list of you. So this is basically how you can deal with login in legacy systems. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you have any questions or any feedback in this case, feel free to leave a comment. I'm Pretty excited to know what you are using this for, what exactly are your problems that you're trying to solve and always open to new questions or new ideas for tutorials on Postman. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more news and updates on Postman. If you want to learn more about Postman and use it at its full potential, I invite you to check out my online course on Postman. I have tried to structure everything you need to know about Postman in an easy to follow online course. There I will take you from learning how to use Postman for creating requests to writing tests, using variables, dealing with authentication and eventually towards using Postman as a solution to fully automate your REST API testing process by using tools such as Newman, Jenkins and any other continuous integration tools. During the entire course, I will keep you engaged with quizzes and assignments and provide you personal feedback on how you're doing. Make sure you check this video description for a link and I'm totally looking forward to seeing you inside.